Welcome to Italics, television for the Italian American experience. I'm your host, Anthony Tamburri. On this episode of Italics, we continue our focus on Italian American photographers. Donato Di Camillo joins Lucia Grillo here in our studio. <laughs> Born in Brooklyn to Abruzzese immigrants and raised in Staten Island, Donato Di Camillo's works have been printed in over 40 publications nationwide. Just in the past year, he talks with Lucia Grillo about his journey to discovering his talent and his unique perspective. Let's go to Lucia Grillo. Donato, thanks so much for joining us on Italics. Glad to be here, really. So you make these these beautiful and striking, very intimate photos. A lot of these come from maybe my imagination or what what I interpret people to be really for real. A lot of photographs we see today are very fluffy and they're and they're kind of made up and people, you know, the day is of uh, taking selfies. Everybody wants to look beautiful. And, and for me, I think it's more important to just reveal the truth. So a lot of people ask me what I'm looking for when I, when I take photographs. And, and what it really comes down to is like just taking, the, taking photographs of the truth, how people really are and what they really do and what they're really like. And uh, it's, it's a way for me to speak because for a long time uh, I lived in a, in a bit of isolation. You know, I come from an Italian background and we were very private at the home. And so uh, I'd imagine myself, you know, as a, an explorer, as many kids do. Mm -hmm. You know, we explore climbing mountains and picturing myself in Africa, uh -huh. taking photographs and, you know, uh, deep sea fishing with Jacques <laughs> Cousteau and things <laughs> like that. It. So it was just, it, it yeah. just really, it did, a, it did derive from those type of um, imaginations back then. And so, yeah, the seed was planted at an early age. Your parents are immigrants. Your parents are from Italy? Yes, they are. They are uh, from Abruzzo. We come from a small town called Canzano, which is in the mountains of uh, part of Italy called L'Aquila. Mm -hmm. Very quaint, small town. And, um, you know, still chickens and very small cottages on the mount, on the hillsides. and things of that nature, little old lady sitting out in black, wearing black. It's been kind of frozen in time, if you will, mm -hmm. you know? I have first cousins that live out and still in that town, and, uh, you know, they send me pictures of, of, of what it's like now, and it wasn't, the, it was, it's like the same way it was <laughs> uh, when I went there when I was 14 years old, so. Uh, but I do, I do really do want to go back to photograph mm -hmm. uh, just the richness of, of uh, our heritage. It's just beautiful. So you were a creative child. When did you actually discover your passion and your, your talent for photography? The seed was planted when I was, when I was a child, but later on it would unfortunately happen while I was in prison. Uh, for a long time I struggled with, with a lot of adversities and made a lot of stupid uh, decisions growing up and uh, got caught up in, you know, you know, some gang, uh, uh, you know, activities and, and some violence and stuff like that. And so years passed, as the years went on, you know, I'd, I'd find myself in and out of, uh, you know, behavior modification homes and and sooner enough, soon enough, I, I wound up in, in prison. It caught me later on in the years when I was older. And it wasn't out of the ordinary for that, for that area where I grew up in, you know, to be involved in any type of, uh, you know, criminal activity. It was just that type of area. I mean, you know, the news made it inflate, you know, sometimes they inflate the story, but it was still a good neighborhood. It's just that I just had made I made a few uh, bad decisions and wound up in prison. And um, 
in there, it, it was probably the best thing that happened to me because it, it made me reflect on what I really love to do. And what I love to do is create photographs and uh, push myself and, and challenge myself to, you know, for the, taking a photograph the way I take photographs is very difficult. I mean, to approach people within, you know, a foot, two feet, and kind of grab a photograph sometimes, it, it's, it works on your nerves. And so overcoming these challenges for me, it helps me in other aspects in life because it, it, it kind of trickles down in business and in uh, relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, it helped me kind of shape, shape who I am today because it taught me how to communicate with people more on a, on a more intimate level. And so the photographs that I take uh, most of the times are very close and a lot of times they find out a lot about people and uh, I'm very interested in people because I come from an Italian background and we, we had this, this culture that was, you know, we pasta and on Sundays and, you know, uh, big, big family dinners mm -hmm. and Christmas parties and so I, I always wondered what it was like on the other side and what other people lived like and, and, and how people lived out in, in, in Africa or, or, you know, in Asia and in places like that. So it, it was always, I was always curious about the world around me, always. It's interesting that you say that too because you could so easily hide behind the camera, snap the photo and go, do you talk to your subjects then? Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. If I feel that it's borderline, um, maybe inappropriate, uh, and it is, maybe it's questionable, but I do find it intriguing, I, I'll, I'll spark up a conversation. And uh, there's a lot of incidences where I found it to be totally opposite of what I was thinking in my mind. For example, I say, wait, well, this person's not gonna wanna take a photo. I'm not gonna ask her, I'm just gonna take the photo and just not engage in conversation. But then again, she looks so, she looks very interesting and I wanna know more about her. So that's where I'll take the shot and I'll ask her, not the shot uh, literally, but uh, I'll take the shot in asking her and or him and I'll find out a whole bunch of things that I was imagining in my head to be true, uh -huh. find out <laughs> it was completely opposite. Wow. And this is, it's an example of how we perceive life in, in a way. The pictures speak a, a million words, but sometimes what you see is not really what, uh, what's, what's there. And so I get attracted to, to things that, to especially subjects that kind of fool, fool people aesthetically because they wind up being really, really intelligent and really, really uh, sharp uh, uh, people. Just fascinating amount of people that I, that I meet doing what I do and, and I love it, I love it. Wow, I mean even your photos are just, you know, just striking to look at because you bring humanity so close to us or you bring us close to humanity. You know, the work is very striking because it's up close, and then your subjects are not always human beings that would be, let's say, conventionally pretty. Mm -hmm. But you, you bring out a dignity in these people. How do you find that beauty? Well, firstly, it comes from inside of me. Um, every time I photograph somebody, I, I, mean, I relate to them in, in one, one way or another. We all we all have a common ground. It's just that we don't really, and I, I'll speak for myself, but I think people fail to see that we all have a common thread. And that common thread, you know, is what makes up, you know, our human race and our similarities and, you know, our differences. And so that's, that to me, I think is what I really search for. I search for what, what, what speaks to me and what, what I feel. So a lot of times I see a person and I'll feel empathy towards the person or it just makes me feel a certain way. And it's probably nine out of 10 times that I've felt that way. Or maybe 
if I see somebody that's kind of disheveled and, and, and looks that he's, he's having a tough time, I felt that way. Whether or not I looked, you know, on the outside, I looked that way, it has nothing to do with it. But inside, as far as feelings are concerned, I can't identify with these people most of the times, you know. Nine out of ten times I identify with everybody I, I take photographs of. It's not, it's not unusual for me to, to, to identify with these people at all. Just because you approach them as a hum one human being to another? I approach them on a human, I mean, how else can you approach a human being besides being, uh, you know, I mean, I think, I think they deserve the dignity and the respect, you know, uh, rather than having steal photographs and, and just, you know, not knowing about what's going on in their lives. And mm -hmm. For me, I think it's important to, to kind of, to kind of uh, filter that with with uh, filter it in to my photographs kind of use it as a, a it's a way for me to communicate with them you know it's a way for me to find out more about people you know maybe it's it's a selfish way for me to find out more about people but it's it's not hurting them it's it's something that I truly love to do because I do truly love people a lot of my friends say it went soft but what <laughs> They're like, what's wrong with you, Donato? What happened to you? We don't know what to do with what you. They want, what do they want you to do instead? No, it's, you know, they just, firstly, I say, I have to say, you know, when they first, a few, few of my old friends see me with a camera, uh, um, say walking on Coney Island because Coney Island is my old neighborhood, mm. they'll be like, <laughs> what are you doing with this camera? Like, you, you taking, I heard you're taking pictures of people, and, you know, and they just, they don't understand it because they're, they're, I'm, I'm more artistically inclined. There's been art in my family for a, lo a long time. My uncle Dominic was an art director, and so I used to watch him paint these beautiful Renaissance uh, period pieces. And I used to, you know, notice how the the, the light would fall mm -hmm. and on his Rembrandt type paintings, and and so these little things were kind of like little seeds that kept being planted in my in my mind for such a long time, and it stood with me. You know, it's only been a few years, I could say, three years I've been photographing seriously, you know, but it's, it's, it's all coming to an under, like it's all, I'm kind of getting, getting it now, where it's all coming from, and it's kind of all making sense to me now, you know? What and who are some of your influences? There's so many, and I would, I would, I would like to name them all because, you know, they do deserve so much respect for, for their work. But uh, Diane Arbus, which she, she's passed away since, uh, you know, tragically, and she had killed herself. I mean, this was a woman that struggled, you know, as we all do. But I felt like if I could talk to her today that I would probably be able to communicate to her on a more understanding level. I think we'd understand each other because her photographs revealed the side of people which people kind of um, cast away and put, you know, push to the side and would neglect or uh, reject in society. These are people that are, but they're, they were important people and there were people like us that had feelings and that, and that deserved the same, the same attention as, as uh, you know, a beautiful model on, on, the, on the cover of Vogue. I think it's important to show that pe all people matter and all people count. And, and so for that, uh, Diane Arbus, you know, it was one of the first people that I, I really truly found a real profound connection with, you know, artistically, and, and like with her vision. Uh, in her years, she was uh, deemed the, the freak photographer and they kind of, uh, they kind of dismissed her work. <laughs> and now these days, they call her uh, one of the, you know, the pioneers of, of, of you know, documentary photography and, 
and whatnot, but it had to take uh, her her suicide and and her life to be you know taken away for you know for this to happen. And there's of course there's other influences, uh, Martin Parr and uh, I mean so many great photographers. Uh, I can't even I can't even begin to just rattle them off. It'd take up all day, but a lot of people uh, you know influence me. One after another of your images, I just you know I I have to sit and really look. But there's one you were you were saying that um, you know all human beings need or you know deserve the same attention as a model in a fashion magazine. There's a photo of an elderly man on the beach who's lounging, kind of like he's posing. Okay. <laughs> and I don't know if that was intentional. Now he's just kind of lounging on the beach, and um, I was thinking. What what would a Donato Di Camillo fashion photo look like? I've been toying with the idea of of, of creating a body of work, which is uh, my interpretation of fashion and and how fashion should be portrayed to to um, to the mainstream. I think I think it would be interesting. Uh, I think it would be an interesting and challenging uh, assignment for me. And uh, yeah, so I think yeah, I think that I will be doing that very very soon. 2016 was a big year for me. Probably in over 40 publications and BBC News and CBC and Washington Post, Huffington. You know, I could name a, I mean, dozens of. Do you expect any of this? No, I didn't expect <laughs> it at all. I wasn't doing it for for any attention. Mm -hmm. I wasn't doing it for Instagram likes, you know, and <laughs> Facebook likes and stuff like that. I was doing it to use it as a an outlet for myself. You know, uh, it was psychologically I needed some type of therapeutic way of just channeling my uh, my my feelings, my frustrations, and, and everything else. It's a way, it's a therapeutic way for me to navigate through life, if you will. I don't go anywhere without my camera. I don't. I, I, I go everywhere. I actually oh, you didn't bring it on set. You did walk into no, the actually, studio. No, actually, I left it on the... <laughs> I hope nobody walked away with no, it. No, these guys are... But anyway, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, what would you be doing if you weren't photographing? I was working construction. I was, in a, I was a union guy for, for a little bit uh, when I came home from prison in 2011. And... Um, it just a lot of things happened so fast. I had found out that I had cancer and uh, in my bladder, and so that kind of threw me for a loop. And I was got depressed, and then I just took to, uh, you know, I kind of I started isolating a little bit, and thank, you know, because I was waiting for the results, and it was driving me crazy. But thank God, knock on wood, you know, it was uh, superficial. But then right after that, I crushed my foot on the job, oh, so it was like very grueling year of like. Uh, trials and and that and that was uh, it gave me time to actually I use everything every negative to my advantage so if I, if I break my foot and I get cancer I'm on I'm on the I'm on a TV I mean I'm on the computer figuring out ways and different compositions and looking at work and trying to trying to figure out ways on how I'm gonna make it in life because Hey, let, let's keep it real here. Uh, you know, I've been in prison and I have, uh, you know, a record. Uh, it includes probably three felonies. So it's not, it's not, it's not really, um, it's, it's not, uh, it's not too easy for me to go in with, with, uh, you know, um, a resume and hand it to, to a company, especially without uh, work history. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a construction worker. I'm not a you know I was a, a workhorse. So, but I'm done with that, and I'm a lot smarter than that, and I feel I deserve better than that. Not that I'm not taking away from from that kind of work. I just know that my brain works differently, mm -hmm. and I think I have a lot more to offer than than you know than than just doing that right now. And um, again, I'm not saying it is it is. You know, my father worked many years as a longshoreman, as a laborer, as a longshoreman. 
So I, I must stress that, that I'm, not, I'm not saying that it's, a, it's any, any kind of work is mm -hmm. good work, but I just feel that uh, intellectually it's not stimulating enough for me. And I'm the type of guy that won't sleep. I won't sleep unless I feel that I'm doing something creative. And, and so that's why I chose this. Unfortunately, it's so tough being in this uh, field with such real fierce competition out there. So, you know, but it's all good. So I like competition, so it's, it's good. <laughs> you seem like you like a challenge. That's yeah, great. I do. And it's great that you have this, you know, this, let's say, not only optimistic attitude, but this kind of active turning things around. Did you learn that or, or is that innate? People actually uh, freak out because I'm so in tune with people and so uh, I'm very insightful. And um, even when I was in, in programs and, and uh, you know, they asked me to become counselors and, and because I work so well with people and I, and I am able to kind of read people in a, in a real profound and real deep way, I, I kind of, and, I, and, it, and it works for me very well when I'm on the street photographing because I could walk over to a total stranger and kind of talk to him for a minute and kind of feel out if this is gonna work out or not. And, and so, yeah, that, that quality I do have, and which is, it comes, and people freak, they get freaked out about it. They're like, Jesus, I don't know, how do you, how you do that? <laughs> you know, how do you do that? My yeah. girlfriend, like, she, she freaks about it. She thinks like, like I'm, I'm weird. <laughs> like, how the hell do you know that that guy was going to say no? Or how do you oh, know that wow. that, you know yeah. what I mean? And it's just like little signs I pick up from being on the street. You have to mm -hmm. learn how mm -hmm. to deal with people. Right. And so I learned a lot about, about psychology. Unknowingly, I learned about psychology mm -hmm. of people. Have you ever had concerns about your work either, um, you know, holding back from taking a risk or... or you know, being afraid that you might have pushed too far? Yeah, I have. Um, I've actually uh, just aborted a whole, whole, you know, series of work sometimes because I felt that it was in, at the time, maybe I thought it was a good idea. And then when I took it deep more and I introspected more deeply into the, into the work, I didn't think that it would, it would benefit me or anybody else. Uh, I did a work on drug abuse and, and it's, it's important, it's important, but the way I kind of, the way I, I um, it was too graphic for what I, from, for, I mean, I was, it was, you know, guys, and a lot of it was uh, taped on film. It was, uh, yeah. it was kind of like undercover, but not, you know, I had total permission. Mm -hmm. But it was, uh, you know, going into, you know, project hallways and, you know, shooting galleries and people shooting heroin. And my mission was to kind of bring attention to this. I got in five minutes, 10 bags of heroin on the street without knowing a person on that street. Okay, so for me, it was, I, I wanted to use it as a platform. Like as a new, I'm not a news guy, but I, I kind of wanted to, Put it out there and say, and show people. Look how easy it is. My neighborhood is infested with with heroin, opiates, uh, oxycontin, all this, all these pharmaceutical drugs that are killing kids. And I can't tell you the staggering amount of people that are dying. And so, for me, it was too graphic, and I just I boarded uh, I boarded the mission on that, and that that was the only one that I really felt that it was just too much, too much showing. Mm -hmm. No. What do you want people to get from your photos, both your subjects, the people that you photograph, and your audience? I just want them to see the truth. I, I want them to see, uh, you know, I, I want them to see my side of what I, how I see. And it's, it's kind of like my way of speaking. Most of the people that I, I've, I've shot in the past, whether they're on the beach or not, are people that people walk by and they kind of don't pay attention to them. And I find them great. I find them colorful and funny and some of them, are, you know, some of them are and some of them are sad, but they're still people and they're, they're neighbors and they're, they're sisters and brothers. These people are, they're not, they're not like freaks, you know? And so that's, you know, 
I guess because of feeling feeling like a you know an outsider for so many years, I think that that's my way of kind of like paying like you know kind of paying back like kind of showing people that you know people deserve attention and 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 I was an outsider because I felt uh, you know I was being judged because of my maybe uh, what I did you know I messed with drugs and I did this and so kind of people kind of like you know uh, kind of categorized me and so I know what it feels like to be categorized and pushed to a certain you know kind of put in that in that category and sh shelved and labeled that type of person and and I don't think people should be should be uh, you know labeled like that. I think I think people are people, and uh, you know f f my neighbors. You know I have neighbors that have kids that are, that are, that are you know they come to me. My my son's addicted to heroin for crying out loud. What, where did this come from? I mean it, it just it just it's just it is what it is, man. It's all it's all just the truth, you know. If your photography could change anything, what would you choose that to be? If it could change anything, I, I think I think I'd, I'd want to change the way people see people for the better. I mean, I think people deserve a fair share, a fair shot. You know, um, I just want to bring joy. I want to bring. I mean, there's a lot of things I want to do with my photography, but um, I'm not. I'm not a one one. Uh, a one-way kind of guy like you know there's a lot of different things that I want to tell people about my photography I want to show them my photography so to answer that question it would have to be just the truth all in one you know there's just the truth about society and people really there's really no better way to put it than just the truth about people you know <laughs> and where can people see your work and purchase your work I have a website. It's up. It's DonatoDiCamillo.com, and on Instagram, it's DonatoDiCamillo. Uh, but stay tuned for some of the better work that's coming out. You know, there's some good <laughs> stuff coming out. You've already got good stuff out. Yeah, but I hope to uh, be putting out real, really good stuff now. Thanks so much for joining us. It was my pleasure, really. I love being here. It was great. Thanks for watching this episode of Italics. I'm Anthony Tamburri. Arrivederci alla prossima puntata. <laughs>